I know where I'm gonna go get food. The panda. I'm gonna go get some food from the panda. You ever get food from the panda? All right, I love panda. Good, decent food. Last minute stop. So anyway, you've got that fire burning in you, whether you're a Christian or not, but even more so if you are a biblicist and you believe the Bible, you read the Bible, you study the Bible, and, you, and, and the Lord has shown you things through Scripture about business and work and job and employment and time and management and all that stuff. You go, man, Lord, this does not line up with what I'm even being taught in church, let alone my society. And I'm just going to throw this stuff out there. You guys can just study it for yourself and read it out. But I believe if you study Scripture, you will realize that God made us to be entrepreneurs. And almost all the parables he uses in Scripture are entrepreneurs. They're business owners. Now, granted, back then we didn't have the job market like we do today in America and in the world. But when you look at the time, because the Bible talks about time a lot and how he does everything in perfect time and in due time, how he reveals things to us, and you look at when, in the process of time, he chose to send his son. He chose to be born when he was born over 2,000 years ago in an unindustrialized world. He wasn't born in the 1400s, the 1500s, the 1600s. He wasn't born in the 1900s. He wasn't born in the 21st century. He came to this planet when it didn't have any of our modern conveniences. No running water. No electricity. None of these high-speed gadgets. That's when he decided to come. And when you look at the bigger picture in Scripture, and I'm going to rant. I don't know how long this thing's going to go, but I have a hard time hitting on one subject without hitting on another. When you have an understanding of the Bible as a whole, and I, I'm nowhere have I arrived... Nowhere do I understand, but but I know the more you go through the Bible and the more you really want to, to do it God's way, and even that, the mistakes I have made, and a major blight on my, on my life is that I was not the husband I should have been, and I've lost my family because of it, and I'm hoping he restores me. But that's enough on that. I've talked about that enough a lot. I've got to keep going on for God. And when you understand the bigger picture in the scripture. I've read through the Bible 14 times. All right. That ain't to brag because I know there are people out there who've read it through more than I have. Okay. I would encourage you to read through your Bible once a year. All right. But what I, what I don't understand is how some people read the Bible day in and day out and seem to be spiritual but just don't get some biblical truth. A great example of this is Good Friday. We just had Easter. Okay? God, he was not crucified on a Friday. Okay, that is a Catholic philosophy, folks. Okay? You don't even have to really understand anything. Okay? He was in the grave three days and three nights. You cannot get that accomplished if he was crucified on a Friday. And there's men that I that I love and respect, you know, out there in the world that I either see through radio or internet or what, who still teach on this Good Friday garbage. All right, and that's just a point. People read the scriptures and they don't see simple truth. And I don't want to be judgmental. And I don't want to be hard. I want to be truthful. I want to be um, strong on biblical truth, but I don't want to be a jerk. I used to be a jerk. And so I don't understand why some people don't see this stuff. All right? That's just an example. 
but, but you read your Bible and you, and, you, and you love to read the Bible and you take notes and you're methodical about it and the more you read it the more uh, some things are just going to come to life and it's not so much as you know people can say well the Bible doesn't tell me that the Bible does tell me that well the Bible doesn't say I can't do that like they have the mentality if the Bible doesn't specifically tell them not to do it that it's okay to do it okay you have to have a better understanding of the whole of Scripture and have somewhat of an understanding of the mind and character of God he is finite I am in he is infinite I am finite we're never going to fully understand him. But there are certain biblical principles that are there that you, you have to understand the Bible as a whole. And you need to grow up past, well, the Bible doesn't tell me to do that so I can do it. That's an immature attitude. It's unspiritual. Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about smoking so I can smoke. Well, the Bible doesn't tell you not to shoot your mom with a 357 either. So is it okay? The Bible doesn't come out specifically and say, Thou shalt not drink alcohol. Thou shalt not drink beer. Okay? And if you understand Scripture, He several times cautions us against drinking strong drink and we want to drink so we justify it and we misuse scripture because Paul told Timothy a little for thy stomach's sake and we know it let's be honest when when Jesus turned the water into wine I mean it was alcoholic wine and so maybe people want to use that as an example oh it's okay to drink uh, alcohol uh, was a picture of joy and uh, Jesus did away with that we don't need that anymore but you have to understand the whole of Scripture and you have to be rightly motivated what 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 motivates you why are you taking that stance okay those are just examples so certain things are going to come alive in Scripture and one of those principles I believe with all my heart and I believe he teaches it in Corinthians I can't remember the exact verse right now that he wants us to be entrepreneurs he wants us to work for ourselves he wants us to have home businesses listen I was talking about the process of time they were farmers all right um, they were herders of sheep okay they owned their little shops they exchanged money within their culture within their people Okay, um, Muslims have an exchange rate between their people. Money changes hands within their people um, 12 to 14 times before it goes out into the public. They're powerful. They're powerful financially. The Jews exchange it within their people, within their community, 10 to 12 times before it goes out into the community. Uh, it's zero exchange rate like that among Christian people.